Welcome to another episode of our CEO series here on Learn, Grow, Invest. Today, I have the pleasure to be joined by Gordon Swaby, CEO of Edifoca Limited. Gordon, welcome. Thanks for having me, Jermaine. All right, good, to, good to have you here. So if it's the first time you're joining us, uh, we do these series from time to time as often as we possibly can to get insights from the CEOs of publicly listed companies. And this gives us the opportunity to hear from them directly about what's happening in the company, maybe get some insights as to any recent financials that have come out. And you know we're free to ask them anything that we wish because it's live. So that's one of the benefits of joining us live, hopefully. Um, you're, you're, if, if not, you can catch us on a replay, but you know this is what we try to do here at Learn, Grow, Invest. So you know, hopefully you're able to share this video, prepare any questions that you have for Gordon, and let's you know, jump right into it. Learning is the key to successful investing, and who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, everyone, welcome again. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the ability that you've given us to produce wealth. We pray, Lord, for your understanding, knowledge, and wisdom so that we may be able to make smart and meaningful investment decisions for our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, Gordon, welcome again. Uh, very, very good to, to have you here. We've actually known each other a very long time, <laughs> so it's actually quite interesting that we're we're just able to meet in this way, but, you know, <laughs> in its own time. It's time. Exactly, exactly. So we asked our community to send us some questions in advance. We'll get to those shortly. But we have some things that we wanted to just kind of ask you just for the context of some of the things, some of the content we've covered about Edufocal in the past. You know, I wanted to first ask you to introduce Edufocal just in case there's someone here watching who's never heard about the company before. And you recently had an IPO. I wanted to understand a little bit about that process. What was it like for you? What was your experience leading up to and in the days since IPO? All right. So thank you again for having me, Jermaine. Um, is it evening or afternoon? Evening to, evening. Uh, to the viewers. Uh, happy to have you here. And, and I'm looking forward to sharing some value. And if you're not a shareholder currently, I hope that after this um, session that you are sufficiently convinced to invest in Edifocal um, after speaking to your licensed financial advisor. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and also if you're a current shareholder that you plan to hold and possibly even buy more shares. So Edifocal is an online learning platform for um, PEP students. That is, uh, that's at least how we started. Uh, and we've expanded from that to offer um, what I call learning for all, right? Um, a lot of people, when they think about education, they think about it within the context of um, formal education or, you know, thinking about it in a standardized way. But for example, what you're doing is education, right? Um, you know, and, and it is something that generates um, revenue and possibly you're, you know, you're even profitable. So Edufocal, you know, centered around our, our platform, which we, you know, we started in 2012, right, when I was... 21 years old, but would have started working on the company in November 2010. Um, you know, so we've been at this now for around 11 years. Um, mm -hmm. Started with my co-founder Paul Allen. Um, Paul is very reserved, not necessarily, you know, not a bombastic CEO like myself. <laughs> um, but we focus on the PEP exams. Um, we used to, I mean, we actually started with CSEC. Right. That's that's actually our history. We started with CSEC, we started with math and English, we started with um, quiz questions um, for, for, for CSEC math, um, and it wasn't working out. And we, what they'd call it modern day, pivoted. Um, and it wasn't really even a pivot because we had planned to add more exams in the future. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we added GSAT, um, as it was known at the time, and we partnered with the Jamaica Observer, who, um, you know, 
gave us money, right? So they gave us money for our what we call our, our codes. So we had codes that were placed in the um in the Jamaica Observer. Every single Jamaica right. Observer that yeah. was published on a I Sunday. That. Yeah. There would be a free code in there that people could use and they could use to sign up to Edifocal and use the platform. So it was free to the users. Um uh, it was free to the users and it was uh, at the cost of the observer. And that was our first time doing what you call a B2B um, concept. You know, that's when I learned about business to business, right? Um, so since that time, we have done business with, you know, private sector companies who've sponsored access to Edifocal government. Um, and again, that would have largely been our CSEC side. We use a concept called gamification to make it fun for the students. Yeah. And every year in, 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 in July of each year, we had what was called the Edifocal Excellence Awards. Um, COVID happened, we stopped. And that would have been two years ago. That was a growing part of our business. Um, we hired sales reps and um, we started because how we outside of that, how we'd make money was that we'd actually have sales reps on the ground who'd go into schools. Um, we would create relationships with schools and we'd have in each school what is called a champion. A champion is a teacher that would sell access to the Edifocal platform on our behalf. So that was growing. We had four reps, had four sales reps. Um, we, we, we poached a high level sales, um, sales executive from Carreras, right. <laughs> and we were going to really blow, you know, blow it up. Um, and then COVID happened. People think that COVID was an automatic opportunity for us, but it actually went against our business model because our model involved being on the ground, making sales in the schools, collecting the cash, so on and so forth. When COVID happened, we had to switch our model. Um, you know, we, 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 we still got private sector companies to sponsor access to the platform and we started to aggressively expand the, the, the corporate side of Edifocal. And the corporate side of Edifocal really involved creating learning content for organizations, um, for them to use within their company. So a lot of the work that we've done there, we can't showcase because, you know, the content that we've created is private and it's for the companies. But we've worked with a number of organizations. We've worked with the JCF, we've worked with the JM Group, we've worked with... Uh, we, we have our current partnership with the Transport Authority, which I'll talk a little bit more about today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're also expanding into other areas of education. So nursing, student education, possibly yeah. even, you know, training and educating doctors. Um, you know, there are a number of areas that we're getting into soon that I'm very, very excited about. And, yeah, you know, you'd have known that we acquired a company in March of this year um, called CleverSchoolTeacher.com. Yes. Uh, which offers K two offers um, learning content to to to, to teachers the K two teachers in the United States of America, um, and that is Edifocal effectively. That's in, in a nutshell. Okay, great. And there are a lot of things there that you said. Well, we'll definitely get to more. <laughs> but earlier this year, you had your your IPO. I remember when you know you, you were you you were sharing even some of your story leading up to the IPO. Uh, so talk to us about that process and were you planning for the IPO before the pandemic? You know, how was that? Uh, I'm more interested though in the days after the IPO because I know you'd have done the rounds and done some other interviews there. So I'm, I'm more interested in post IPO, what would have taken place? How have the first, you know, quarter been since, since listing and so on? How, how has that process been for you? So the beautiful thing about listing for me is that it didn't just happen to us or it didn't happen to me i planned for it right so i'm very off here with the jc rule book i i you know generally try to refresh myself on the rules and i try to stay within the confines of the rules um i think that sorry hello you're still hearing me right no, you're good you're good oh, okay, i just wanted good. persons to see you a little bit oh yes yeah um so we 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 I, I i was always off here with the rules um again you know it's a lot to learn it's you know there's always learning happening um but just to give you some backstory um i always wanted mayberry to list us right <laughs> and um my, my first brokerage account actually was with mayberry and Excellent. if you know mayberry you know that there's a, there's a one million dollar um opening requirement which i did not have so I went to Mayberry and I convinced them um, to give me an account without the million dollar requirement. And I told them that one day I'll have a million dollars. Um, long story short, they gave me the account, the rep gave me the account. Um, but I always admired how Mayberry operated. Um, one day, a friend of mine, um, <coughs> Kirk Anthony Hamilton, was going to what was called a Mayberry Investor Forum. 
in fact, if you go on Mayberry's page, you, you probably find a picture of Chris and I at the time. But I went to Chris and I was talking to him and I told him about the deal that we we're doing with Transport Authority and just really the phenomenal growth that we we're experiencing in the company. Um, and somehow he listened to me because I would have met him many times before and he didn't remember who I was. Uh, but he gave me his number and, um, you know, told me to, you know, stay in touch with him. So the next day, I, you know, there was a challenge, there was an issue, and I called him about it and he responded. Um, long story short, he made me an offer via WhatsApp <laughs> to buy a piece of any phone call. Uh, he told me I had, I had until the end of the day <laughs> to, to, to decide. And um, I said yes. And, you know, so it started with a, <clears throat> with a private round um, from Mayberry, an investment in any phone call. In fact, it was, it was him purchasing or Mayberry purchasing a piece of our of my stake in the company. <clears throat> um and um after that no we, we would have had i think it was a pref share round um which which he would have participated when i say he by the way i'm talking about me Barry, but I, I i'm speaking because I, I would have dealt with chris i still do deal with chris um and you know that that entire process was <clears throat> such an eye-opener for me because it was my first time getting investment of that getting an investment of that size but also you know the level of sophistication at mayberry really you know you know, it forced me to, to, to operate in a different way, in a more formal way. And, you know, it's not as if I was not operating in a formal way before, um, but certainly it was a great learning experience for me. In terms of after listing, um, <laughs> I mean, dream come through, you know, I, 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 it's something I've wanted for years, you know, almost 10 years of my life and to see it happen, to see, you know, that this is coming from a time when, a company like Eddie Focal was not your it's not a, still not a traditional company. Yeah. And for us to list a company with a balance sheet that is largely largely intangibles, um, you know, is a big deal, right? Now we have one on one coming to market. Um, I'm happy to have one on one listed because then you can do comparables, right? Um and you know, there's a lot them listing I tell people is a net positive for us, not a net negative. And um, I know Ricardo Ali, the CEO of One very well, and I, you know, I have a lot of respect and time for him. But it's been a great journey. Um, nothing has surprised me. Um, but getting used to this quarterly cadence, this, 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 you know, delivering results, delivering good results on a, on a quarterly basis is extremely hard because as a private company, when you have a bad quarter or you have a quarter of loss, it's like, hey, it's fine as long as you have full year, you know, profit. But yeah. investors respond. To results on a quarterly basis um so that that uh, you know and personally for me it has been a little stressful because I, since listing i've not gotten a break i've you know i've not gotten any time to celebrate i literally have not had a day of celebration because i've just been busy working trying to grow the company and deliver strong results um yeah so that's that's <laughs> that's kind yeah, of I was, I was gonna i was gonna ask you because one of the things i think about now i mean I would imagine that after listing, because investors, especially our, our local investors, they have expectations, right? So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say that I have... Reasonably I have, so. Yeah. So, I mean, because one of the things that we do, for example, we look at the prospectus and we'll say, well, a company has the intentions to do something and that's the benchmark. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, as you write, rightfully said, maybe there is a, a quarter that you made, maybe an investment in something, so it's not maybe going to be your best quarter, but then it's maybe so heavily scrutinized that maybe persons, I guess, may forget to, to zoom out. But um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think that how, so how do you measure success now as opposed to how you might have before? What does success look like for you? Um so you know that's a great question Jermaine. um i mean obviously for me success involves delivering shareholder value um but success also means a number of other things that are not tangible or do not always immediately translate in the bottom line right so yeah. staff happiness you know i do want my employees to be extremely happy and to be proud of where they work um you know happiness for me means delivering value to students delivering value to our, our corporate clients right um happiness um success also means me being happy in my role as ceo and feeling like i'm actually delivering value um so 
so I'm very conscious of all of those things, and it's it's a it's a you know it's a massive crown on my head that while a crown weighs me down, um, but there's nothing else in this world I'd rather be doing than what I'm doing now. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I did this, I've done this for for effectively 11 years. If if you look at if you're using November 19, 2010, when I registered the company, um, you know. 11, 12 years now, as uh, you know, I've been doing it for so long that I've gotten used to it, and it's 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 not easy, but it's familiar, right? Um, but I'm excited about Eddie Foka. Like I've, you know, I'm more excited now than I've ever been. Um, so so my 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 enthusiasm comes out, I believe, in what I say because I genuinely do believe it. Um, and there's nothing that has happened now that has surprised me so far um, with the company. So. Okay. Great, great. So we're gonna get into a little bit of the, um, you know, questions about some of the recent developments now. So one of the things that we saw announced recently was an acquisition. You mentioned it earlier of Clever School <clears throat> Teacher. But Jeremy, okay. before we get there, we, before we yeah. get there, I'll give an example of one of the things that we're considering. So we're considering an ESOP for eighty four twelve, um, and I mean that would effectively mean us buying. The company buying shares because we're not going to issue new shares, right? Or at least that's not that's not the strategy we're we're exploring. You mm-hmm. know, the company buying shares from the market. Um, you know, if we do that, that hits our PNL, right? That that's it. as far as I know, I'm not on a company. It would be an expense, right? So even even that, when we do it, is important, right? So yeah. I, I, you know, when the stock price falls, I'm like, okay, cool, that's fine. It's it's gonna be cheaper to, to you know to do the to do the, the the buying when 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 we start to roll out that strategy or if we roll it out. Not saying that we're doing that, so just giving an example of the consequences of actions that are taken in a company. Okay, okay, fair enough. Thank you for that. Um, uh, so, um, yeah. So let's uh, let, let, let's go back to what I asked previously. There was there was an acquisition released. I'm trying to get the exact date here on March 29th at 5:06 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eddie Focal Limited has acquired the website and assets of Clever School Teacher, a Denver-based edtech company that provides monthly curated K1 resources and live online personal development sessions for K1 teachers in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that acquisition and what it entails. I know a lot of um, us in the community were, you know, hoping for more details about it. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping here that you can give us an overview and then I'll ask some specific questions based on what our members would have submitted. Sure. So, can, well, can I share screen? Is that possible? Yes, you can. You can. Uh, one second. You should see a big share button to the bottom with a plus sign in the screen. Yeah. So while I look for what I'm looking for, so Clever School, I mean, truly is an amazing, uh, and careful of my words, it's not a company because Clever School itself, um, it, what we did was that we acquired the, 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 the IP assets of, of, of Clever. Um, so Clever is not a company, the company is Edifocal LLC, which holds oh. the assets of Clever School, right? Um, and Clever is, is an asset or a brand of Edifocal that creates um, learning content um, for K two teachers in the United States of America. So there, so so Clever School has zero Jamaican customers, zero, right? Um, we focus exclusively on the American marketplace, which, as you can understand, is a massive market. It's a rich market, <laughs> um, and you know, it's 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 one of those markets where it's hard to break through. But we have broken through with Clever, right? Because we've already bought, you know, we bought a company that is is doing well, is profitable. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, looking out for it. All right, you t- you seeing my screen now? Not yet, not yet. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, you, you have to press share twice and. Tab one second. All right, see my screen yep. now. Yep. So, so this, this, yeah, so this, this is an example of the content that people pay for at cleverschoolteacher.com. So, so it's a PDF. It's it's in a PDF document. The content is developed 
on a monthly basis, we produce new content. And obviously, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see copyright, Edifoka LLC, and Clever School Teacher. Right? So the, we own this IP asset. Um, so this game is, is a math game, Feed the Hungry Animals. Right? It gives you the instructions, you know, it, it shows you the activities. So teachers print these activities and use them in their classroom for students. And we have to produce this kind of content every month. Now, what happened is that the person, Dee Dee Wills, who we bought the company from, she's a teacher herself and she produced the content herself. Okay. When, we, when we bought the company, we had to find the people to produce the content because obviously, you know, it's a new owner and, and she, you know, she has moved on and, you know, so we have to get, you know, we had to get into that groove of, of figuring out how to produce the content ourselves. Right. So I think as it is now, we've produced about three or four months worth of content. Okay. Um, and we are now moving into the other stage of transition. Right. I can stop sharing now. Yeah, so we're moving into the other stage of transition for Clever, which is one, we're redoing the platform. Um, we're redoing the website. So the, the website is run on WordPress, actually. So we're redoing the website, to, you know, not just for aesthetic purposes, but also to work out uh, a better way to capture new customers. Speaking of customers, how it works is, so we have, we have a couple hundred users, we have, uh, and how it works is that we charge their credit cards every month. They subscribe to the platform, and we charge your credit card for a varying amount, depending on the plan that you've subscribed to, but it can be as low as $25 and as high as $300, I believe. Um, so it's like if you're paying $300, they're about you're paying for the year. Um, you get you get access to content that was created in the past and, of course, of course content in the future. Um, if you're paying the $25 a month, you're paying for content in that current month and for content in the future. You don't get access to content in the past. Okay. So. The beautiful thing about that clever is if you look at the content that I just showed you, right? Let me, let me just let me bring it back up so it is clear for your your, your viewers. The concept is clear for your viewers. Um, one second. I was also so going to ask you. You mentioned a few hundred users. Is it possible for us to get any specific numbers here? Um, we will share a separate release um, speaking to the number, but I wouldn't want to share the number here. But it is a it's a it's a decent sized amount of people is what i'd say yeah. um and, and that's another thing too when we bought clever it was actually in decline and that's actually why we bought it right uh, we bought it because it was in decline that we saw the opportunity to stabilize the ship start producing content right and then grow it so we're actually knowing the third phase which which as i said before is growing so you, you look at this 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 piece of content right we pay to produce it once we capitalize it then you don't have the cost anymore so what I mean by that is this, if we have 300 users now, right, and we want to get to a thousand, there's an upfront cost to get people in, but then you never have that marketing cost again, if you can maintain those users. In other words, what they call it in SaaS is, is reducing churn, right? Okay. So, so when somebody joins the Learn, Grow, Invest Telegram group, you'd have, you know, you'd have gotten a new user when they leave or if they leave then you have experienced churn yeah. what we want with clever is that we want you to come and we want you to stay because the longer you stay is the more money we make from you right so then you, you get into what is called average revenue per user so if yeah. john brown comes and it's 20 dollars a month for john brown right we 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 so the average revenue per, so i won't speak to the average revenue per user right now but the average re, um, user stays with clever for about 12 months so if John Brown joins Clever, he will likely stay with us for 12 months and we will earn around $240 from him before he decides to unsubscribe from Clever, right? Okay. So, so the beautiful thing about it is the only costs we're incurring are the marketing costs, but you recoup it very quickly. Um, and you're not, you're, not, you're not paying more to develop the content that was already there. So the content that you have will forever be useful um, and you can always bring in more people. So we could add that. We could let's say we got up tomorrow morning. I got up tomorrow morning. We added an extra two thousand users. There will be no additional cost for us. I mean, there'll be server costs, but it's it's minuscule. Um, yeah. So you can understand why a business like that is so scalable and could potentially become bigger than every other part of Edifocal um, in the near future if we if we position ourselves properly. Okay, I'm actually looking for. So you mentioned um, average revenue per user. As hoping that you'd have been able to give us 
something there because you did, I believe, mention that in your prospectus where you were able to share your average revenue per user in 2019, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to have that yeah. data for 2022 as well. So, so, so such is the nature of, of so it, it's not that we don't want to share it. It's that to, to do that kind of data crunching requires time. And when you're trying to grow a company and you have you know limited staff resources, you can't. You have to prioritize, right? Okay. Um, so I'm hoping in that in future reports that we can segment by um, you know we can segment our revenue, show the amount of users in each you know segment, and you know the, we want to do all of those things, but we're not there yet. And we want to ensure that when we're presenting data, it is properly presented in a way that can be useful for people. Um, so it's not that we we're hiding it and we don't want to share. We do. But we want to that we want to ensure that when we do share it, it is done properly. Okay, okay. So one of the final things I'll ask you about about clever school teacher is what's the strategy? So is it the plan to you know expand all throughout the US? Is the US a starting point? Do you plan mm -hmm. to maybe use it for other countries? What's what's the overall strategy for for CST? So firstly, I would look at it less around CST and more around Edifocal LLC. So one of the things that we plan to do in this quarter is establish a board of directors for Edifocal LLC. Um, we're expecting that this board will be a, a board of heavy hitters in the United States, people who can open doors for us. Um, because what we also want to do is to have a relationship with schools in Florida, a number of schools in Florida. Um, and we're having those conversations now, but what will happen is that we can leverage that same CST content and sign bigger deals, bigger checks. So we're, 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 we're going to be pushing the, the B2C strategy, which we're already doing, the SaaS model, but we're also looking to close 10 schools in a district, 20 schools. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's something that is very possible this year. I'm not saying that it will happen this year, <laughs> but, but you can understand that, you know, a school in Florida writing a check for you for $50,000 is much easier than a school in Jamaica writing a check for you for $50,000. So, we would not look to do a B2B strategy in Jamaica for Clever, but we definitely would look at doing it in the United States of America through Edifocal LLC. Um, so, so we're very excited about that. In Jamaica, our strategy would be a little bit different. So instead of going through the schools directly, what we would do, because you know, if you look at the content in Germany, you realize that that content is applicable to anywhere on earth. Like that kinder content can be used in Jamaica, right? <laughs> And we have a large database of that content. We could we could animate it, we could repurpose it, we could turn it into books. There's a lot of things that we can do with that content, right? So our strategy in Jamaica would be holistic, targeting the early childhood institutions from a B2B perspective, not a B2C perspective. So it is sponsored by the government or corporate Jamaica. Um, and Eddie Foucault LSC would deliver that value. So okay. just to kind of so I you know, you know, I would have seen some commentary on, online around oh. You know, that can't work in Jamaica. But I was also told that Eddie Foucault couldn't work in Jamaica. So um, I, we, we, may prove, we may prove some people wrong around how it can work. There are many creative ways to do things, especially if, if the efficacy is there and it is actually working, which it is. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. So can we expect any other type of acquisition from Eddie Foucault in the near future? Oh, absolutely. I mean, right now we have two deals on the table. Um, one deal in particular is a massive deal, <laughs> a massive, massive deal. And I'm very excited about it. I mean, it, who knows if it happens, you know, you, you'd hear very soon. And I, I believe that, I mean, it's a massive deal. <laughs> we've, we've not, we've not, you know, it's just conversation really. Yeah. Um, negotiating as we do the normal course of business, but you know, I would have said from 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 IPO from listing that inorganic growth is a big part of our strategy. So if we get back into CSEC, no, the conversation is not if we definitely will get back into CSEC. When we get back into CSEC, the conversation will be: Are we going to acquire another company that is already in that space, or are we going to start from scratch? Both are very very doable options. I mean, financing is not a problem. Mayberry is a very willing and able partner and, and and we work very well with, with Mayberry as our investment bank and I do have a good relationship with Gary and Chris um, and others at, at Mayberry. So you know if 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 the opportunity is there, 
the opportunity makes sense. Funding is not an issue. Also, bear in mind to Germany that we only went to market for paltry $130 million, you know, yeah. unlike many others, we never went for the full, um, you know, we we're very conservative. We never went for the full um, 500. So bear in mind that there's always an opportunity for us to do a rice issue an APO or some other form of equity financing in the future to raise that additional 380 million. Um, so there are options on the table and there's also debt. So, so you know, we're preference shares. There's a lot of things that we can do if you, yeah. if you understand that, you know, as a listed company, there's a lot that you can do. Okay, okay. So talk to us a little about a little bit about the partnership with with the Jamaica Library Service that was announced last week. You went to a, a press conference. You said you weren't able to share as 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 much details as you wanted to at the time. It's, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that deal, what it entails, and how soon we can start seeing maybe some of it being rolled out in in, in Jamaica within weeks? Um, you know, so. Our relationship with the JLS is a long-standing relationship for transparency. I used to serve on the JLS board. I was a JLS director for many years. I've not been a director now for about three years, um, but I'm very off with their operations. And um, you know, all I saw was opportunity to how you know, all I saw was opportunity around how we could transform the JLS. No. I mean, let me let me go on the JLS website. <laughs> but with JLS, the Jamaica Library Service of Jamaica, um, they have the single largest footprint of any government organization in Jamaica. There are more library locations than tax um, than tax offices. There are more library locations than police stations, right? I mean, this is not the network is the powerful thing here. Um, you know, you'd have seen earlier this year that we inked a partnership deal with Supreme Ventures through their charge up offering. Right, um, and everywhere there's a library, there's a charge up, um, you know, center. Okay. Um, now, in in March of 2020, I said that the future of learning in Jamaica is hybrid learning. Now, what I mean by that is, I want you to envision a child walking into Jamaica Library Service to an edifocal branded area with edifocal branded computers, logging on to the computer accessing the edifocal platform right doing pep you know doing your pep practice doing live classes you know in the evenings after school because remember too a library is near to every school now how is that child going to be how is that child going to afford access to the platform that child could be sponsored by a corporate entity i mean svl foundation sponsored us to the tune of more than 20 million dollars last year in cash we have not Done anything else <laughs> with SBL Foundation. And you'd also understand that SBL is owned by Mayberry, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, so there, again, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of synergies, a lot of things that we're doing. This is at no cost to the library. I mean, we're fixing up the libraries at no cost to them. Um, and you know, we do have a number of private sector partners that are interested in working with us to transform education in Jamaica. <clears throat> For me, because literacy and numeracy is such a large issue in Jamaica, and a lot of people don't realize how bad it is because their circle of friends can read and write. But when you yeah. have, I mean, let me let me actually see if I can find some stats to share with you. So just to kind of contextualize how bad things are. But you see, <clears throat> how I am, you know, I don't see things and complain. I see things as opportunities, right? Now, let me just give me one moment and I'll just bring this up. Sure, sure. And this is a working. Uh... <laughs> All right. So, there we go. I can't share my screen, but I will, I will give you some data. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. One moment. All right. So, So here's the thing, right? So we have about 45,000 births in Jamaica annually, right? So we have about 45,000 babies that are born each year, right? Of, of the amount of babies that are born, 90% of them are enrolled into an early childhood institution, right? 
So we have about 42,000, you know, children, kids, toddlers enrolling into early childhood institutions annually. When you get to the primary level, enrollment falls to 83%. So you have 37,000 students enrolling at a primary level annually. At the secondary level, it is 80%, right? So we have about, um, we have about 30,000, 32,000 students doing the CSEC um, exam annually. And then now at tertiary level, it is 27%, right? Which equates to around 51,684 adults registering in universities annually. It's 69% female, 31% male. Um, in terms of literacy and numeracy, only 65% of fourth grade students have mastered foundational um, skills in numeracy, while 85% of fourth grade students master literacy, right? So can you can you can understand that? Well, so I'll give you some more stats. 12% um, of students drop out of high school before grade 11, right? Only 40% of 11th grade students go on to sit CSEC. So the question is, Jeremy, what is happening to all of these people? Where are they? Yeah, they're all, they're, every single day. So for me, this is about more than just money. I mean, I believe that we can pull off what it is that we're doing, and the JLS plays a key role in that. The, the person who can read and write, they're not going to take up a tablet to go on to Eddie Focal to, to try and learn. No, you have, the intervention has to be different, and that's a lot of people, thousands of people. Now, you hear me go back to this word efficacy. If we can deliver, track, and show the results, there will be unlimited amounts of money being thrown at us from all over the place to do what we do in a much larger way. Okay. I, I, I know you get what <laughs> so, 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 so I play the long game, Jeremy, and everybody wins, right? Because while I also want to do good, I also want to make a lot of money for my shareholders, yeah. right? Now, in this model, everybody wins. The, 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 the adult or the child gets value through education, in most instances at no cost to them. The country of Jamaica gets better educated people, which means that the quality of their jobs will be better, which means that they earn more money, yeah. right? Um, we make a lot of money through our corporate partners, through the government of Jamaica, through foreign partners, through Jamaicans in the diaspora who may sponsor access, right? You know, there, there's so many ways to do this and we have been doing it and yeah. continue to refine our model and get better at it. So the, the, the library, you know, and I hope I've articulated well, <laughs> you know, how important yeah, I, think you have, I think you have I think persons if, if if they missed it it may be good for them to rewatch that's why we're on YouTube so uh, I mean thank you for that I, I look forward to the additional details that you mentioned that will be coming out soon uh, what I'll do now we do have a fair amount of questions that are left for you so what I'll do is I'll ask you the question um, ask you to give us the 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 um the concise response because we have I, I, looking at my list here i have maybe 20 more questions for you so i don't want to scare persons in thinking this is going to be a really long live sure um, i keep, I keep so, it very precise <laughs> yeah so so what i'll do um we'll start with our our telegram group uh so the question is um how much has the acquisition of Clever school teacher impacted the revenues that we're seeing for your latest financial report. Mm -hmm. um, Clever is still very small. Um, it's in the report. It's added about three point four million dollars to our top line. Um, okay. You know, because again, too, we're 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 investing a lot in. Well, I would have already articulated what we've invested in, so I won't spend all the time on that. So it's added about three point four million dollars to our our top okay. line. Great. Uh, next question. That is, <laughs> <US dollars. laughs> okay, okay. Uh, how do you plan to limit your receivables? Um, so a lot of what we're focused on are things that generate uh, cash, immediate cash. So you know, so plays like Clever generate a lot of cash. The play that we're looking on right now, through this potential acquisition, generates a lot of cash, um, and we are growing. You know, on a monthly basis, in terms of the amount of cash that we generate, 
Um, so you'll, you'll see over the next six to 12 months that our receivables will shrink significantly. Um, and you'll see more cash coming into the business, cash being retained into the business on the balance sheet. So we're very excited about that too. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, how do you see one-on-one -on -one impacting your growth? I'm only focused on EduFocus growth. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we're the best in the marketplace. Okay, okay. All right, uh, how many? Well, well you... but, but, but let, let's go back to that one, that question very quickly. Okay. We only recently entered another market through an acquisition. Um, EduFocus is effectively only operating in Jamaica with a small amount of our revenue coming from one other country. Uh, I believe that one-on-one -on -one is in four countries. So I guess the question you can ask yourself is, what is the large difference in revenue when you compare the two companies based on the size of their operations? Okay, okay. So that question is directed to the person who asked it. Um, you know yourself. So I'm both um, the numbers are out there so they can compare them. Yeah, yeah. So there was a question being asked here about monthly active users. Um, where where it is versus your target i don't know if you're able to speak that you did mention you're trying to present that data to us i'm not sure if you can speak yeah to so i can't speak to that right now no. okay okay uh next question is asking what's your current churn rate can't speak to that right now okay um how 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 is the edifocal biz side developing um so so you mentioned a few of the companies you're working with so far anything new to report on that side any upcoming maybe partnerships or, or contracts that you're able to share on that side any football business accounts for don't quote me on it around 40 percent of our revenue now okay it's it's big and getting bigger and we'll make an announcement soon about uh some massive changes that we're making positive changes just because of the sheer growth of the company okay cool I'm curious, but I'll, I'll, I'll restrain myself from asking any more questions there. So you mentioned, I believe it was maybe a tweet I saw. You mentioned that your team has been expanding. What roles do you, what roles have you added and what roles do you see that you need to add in order to, to continue growing? Um, I mean, we're looking to hire eventually a COO and a general manager for both to learn and business division. <clears throat> so learn is diversifying very quickly um, or health education and our finance education would actually fall on the learn the learn vision um, and the, 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 the business division will also just based on its space of growth it requires a general manager so in the very near future we'll be hiring a general manager for both learn and business and uh, a ceo okay okay so you did mention i believe in the in the prospectus plans to also cover financial education content. That's definitely <laughs> right. something that Learn Grow Investor are interested in. Is there anything you can share about that? What does that look like? Is there a particular age group or demographic you're focused on? Anything that you're able to share? Um, just know that if we sign this deal, it is it's going to be groundbreaking. <laughs> okay. uh, and in fact, it's not a matter of if, it's, a, it's just more of a matter of when, and it will be this year. Um, Okay. But when we when we announce our financial education initiative move, um, I mean, <laughs> between tonight and December thirty first, twenty twenty two, a lot of things will happen. Um, a lot of the things that I'm talking to you about, Jeremy, are not things that we're going to take six years to execute. I'm talking a matter of months. Um, okay. As far as I'm concerned. Um, any focal, any focal stock price right now, you know, PE is what around 60. 60 what does it work out to? 60 something, um, 60, whatever. Um, a couple of days ago, it was over 100. You know, so people talk about PE within the context of where the company is, but what about where the company would be in three months, four months? You know, um, so who knows? The stock price as it is now may never be the same. Um, you know, it, it, this may be the cheapest that the stock price will be. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying that, but anything is possible. And a lot of, a lot happens in a very short space of time. Okay. Okay. So nothing about the, at, at least the audience that you're targeting, anything at all you can say. So, so you're planning to offer it through an acquisition. Is, is that what you're saying? 
No, that's not the acquisition conversation is a separate thing. Okay. This is a partnership with a very large company. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you, you haven't really given us much there, but okay. I'll I'll work with it. All right. So uh next question here. How does Edifocal plan to grow their revenues and profits to meet the projected figures that were outlined in the prospectus? So I, I believe we had around 50 million um, in that range for net profit for 2022. Um, if you really look at the numbers, we listed on a nine month loss, correct? Um, and you'd have no by now seen Q1, Q2 numbers. So if we listed on a nine month loss, it means that we had three quarters of loss for 2021, which would mean that we made all of our profits in the last four. nine months. Mm -hmm in q4 right yeah. this is for last year this year we have made profits every single quarter right and we have beaten full year 2021's profit number in the second quarter we have two quarters left so mm -hmm. i think i've already articulated how we're going to grow our revenue so you know hey okay, okay. all right um Next question here. I'm not sure of this question. Um, what are what are some of the benefits that the school Edifocal Academy um, will receive, and when will it be recognized as an official school? That's that's how the question is phrased. That depends on how fast the Ministry of Education moves. Um, I can't dictate how fast they take to approve us, but <clears throat> Edifocal Limited itself will not be the school. The school will be Edifocal Academy Limited, and the operations of the school will be transferred to Edifocal Academy Limited. So yeah. it means that the expenses and the revenues are moving over to Edifocal Academy Limited. Edifocal Limited will own Edifocal Academy, and Edifocal Academy Limited will have its own school board. Um, and will derive the benefits that come with a school, which means no GCT. It means, um, you know, just that there are a lot of benefits that come with being a school. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm going to intentionally skip this question. Um, you answered that one already. You, there's a question here about the financial education, but you, I think you gave us as much as you I don't, could. I don't, but Jermaine, I, I think you just, I just articulated something very important about the school and, but okay, we can keep mm -hmm. it. I mean, that's a big deal, I believe, but okay. No, well, I mean, what, what I'm trying to do is get through the, the questions here. If you want to expound on anything that- No, 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 we can get through the questions because I'd love to answer as many questions as possible. Yes, so, so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And then we'll have, I think, enough time to go through some mm -hmm. more. So, some more things that you, you may want to, to, to highlight for us. Um, the next question is how big is the nursing education opportunity for, for Edifocal? Um, do you see any other such you know, partnerships upcoming along those lines? So, there is a, let me try to get the name right, because I'm not, I want your viewers to Google N C L E X National Council Licensure Exam, NCLEX, as they, they call it. Every single nurse on earth who is going to the United States to become a nurse, they have to do the NCLEX exam. Um, NCLEX, and this can be done, you can do tutoring in NCLEX online. Um, Tisha Vaughn, who we've had to lead. Um, she's going to be the program lead for nurse education. So nurse education would fall on the health education, right? It would be a program on the health education. Um, she's going to be the program lead for that. Um, we're happy to have her on board. She's qualified, competent. Um, I'm just really good at what she does, and we're looking to aggressively grow her, her you know, her offerings. Um, so the market is massive. I mean, it's a massive market potential. US dollar earnings for us. Uh, just truly something that we're excited about. I mean, we have so many things going on right now. We, you know, just one of them I could spend an entire session talking about. Yeah. Don't don't forget, Jeremy. Don't forget that when we listed, we listed on a nine-month loss 
Yes. And people thought that we were a pet company. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> do you see any focal offering CXE in the coming school year? That's the next question. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we will start offering CSA this year. Okay. All right. There was mention of an impairment loss, I believe, of about 21 million. Uh, can you e explain the makeup of that loss? No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think you mentioned this. The next question was, how do you plan to grow your, your cash balance? You did mention that a few of the the, the initiatives that you're you're pursuing should lead to an increase in cash and we should see that you know being be, being reflected over the next few months um the next question i have here is how should persons look at edifocal considering you mentioning it's a it's an ed tech company I, I i get the the impression that you want persons to be able to view it a certain way should we should we be assessing some of the things you do in, in a certain light. Can you speak to that a little bit? So people thought we're a pet company. They thought that our growth was as a result of COVID and that we can't repeat it. And that, you know, I heard a lot of things. Um, no, I'm no longer hearing that. No, I'm hearing that the revenues and the pro no, I'm hearing that the profits need to be larger, of course, and that's fair and that's fine. Um, I mean, there, there were years where we were doing $20 million in revenue, right? Full year. <laughs> and that was not that long ago. Um, year today, we've done $133 million. Um, so we're, we're, we're a growth company. We're a growth stock, as they love to call um, a company like Eddie Focal. You know, we're, we are a growth stock. And don't judge us by our past performance and don't judge us by our last six months performance because it's not impossible Jeremy and Foss to be doing 100 million in a month in the near future I'm not saying that we're going to do that because of the disclaimer <laughs> but I'm saying if we ever did it I mean don't it, it shouldn't be something that should shock anybody don't count us out doing 20 million in profits in a, in a single month that's not impossible and this may not take five years <laughs> Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, in terms of, so you mentioned earlier that any focal biz accounts for about 40% of your revenues. You mentioned the makeup, well, the amount that PFP has been adding as well. Is it safe to assume that the remainder of that business would be on the learn side? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, let me go through some more questions because we, we have questions coming in from all, all sides. So let me scroll through the chat here. I think, believe I saw some earlier. Guys, please post your questions for Gordon in the chat. If you've, you've been enjoying the video, remember to like it as well. It definitely helps our channel grow, all right? So Michael is saying that, let me just bring that on screen. It would be a good idea if Learn gets into stationary supply chain to get their books, pens, pencils, and papers made for them and to buy more companies. Seems more like a comment than a question. So, um, so the owner of Kingston Bookshop is on our board. Nobody has ever spoken about that, but that's also fine. Okay. <laughs> and Kingston Bookshop is the largest uh, largest bookstore chain in the Caribbean. Sounds like we do need to talk about it. Then anything that. We can we can expect there in terms of but we we sell physical booklets it's just not a large part of our business and we do sell them in kingston bookshop but again we do have a lot of things going on that we do we don't have unlimited staff or unlimited time and we do have to deliver quarterly results so we focus <laughs> on the things okay okay it's it's by the way it's n clicks so it's with an x not an s ah okay okay all right we'll update that we'll be in the chat uh, Rachel from LinkedIn is asking, where do you see Edifocal in 30 years? The largest company on the exchange. Okay. And I mean, that won't take 30 years. All right. All right. Thank you for that. You know, you know, Jermaine, as it is, you know, um, Edifocal is one of the most active, the actively traded stocks on the exchange. I believe that we're in the top 10. Ah, okay. 
<laughs> well, you see, um, that's 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 good to know. That's interesting. I mean, we were we were we we're talking about that a little bit. I won't I won't share that that conversation there. But that's yeah, I mean, we average that's... about we average about a million dollars in trades a day. Okay. <laughs> I guess most people don't know that. Yeah. And mind you, we're still a new company, but there are many companies that are recently listed that are not doing a million dollars a day in trades. Okay. All right. Um, Andrew is saying he's he's flabbergasted to see that the price, the share price, actually dipped after such an amazing report. Also, there's much more to come from Edifocal soon. Masses. But this is not a question. Sorry about that. I thought it was. So like I said it in your group earlier. People buy for one reason, which is to make profit, and yeah. people sell for multiple reasons. Sometimes they sell without making a profit. Um, I definitely don't judge people for selling. Um, I'm, I'm honored and privileged that they chose to buy the Eddie Focal stock in the first place. Um, and I'm, gen I'm genuinely not shocked that the stock price fell after results. I don't think it's because of people not being happy with the results. I think it's because a person or persons took profit. Um, because remember, if you look at the, the history of our stock price over the last month, Eddie Focal's stock price fell as low as $2.17 mm -hmm. in July. Right, July twentieth, I believe, and we're now July sixteenth. You know, so someone is happy, right? And, yeah. and yeah, so it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, we're, we, the sheer price of any focal um, does not determine the fundamentals of the company, and it is it is important to differentiate between the sheer price and the company itself. Um, we have a strong board, a very very strong board. I mean. Our chairman Peter Levy is in our top five shareholders, and he is um, the managing director of the largest insurance company in Jamaica. Um, you know, we have Shauna K. Fuller, who owns Kingston Bookshop. Um, we have Grace Lindo, as far as I'm concerned, the best IP lawyer in Jamaica. We have my father, you know, very well known businessman in Manchester, myself. Um, and we have Kevin Donaldson, um, former CEO of Sagicore Investments, um, on the board. So we have a strong board, we have a strong management team. I think our fundamentals are great and continue to get better each quarter. Um, <clears throat> we still have access to a lot of cash. We can do a lot of things. Um, and it's just really an exciting time to be running an edtech company on the, the junior market of, of the stock exchange. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I will say there, though, that what we've seen, and this is something we talk about in our group all the time, that uh, good performance is not always rewarded and it's actually right. sometimes puzzling to see that sometimes a, a, a company doesn't do as well as another but because of some reason maybe sentiment or otherwise or just the news surrounding the company you know you'll you'll have a company that did maybe its best quarter or its best year and it's still not being being rewarded in terms of how, how investors are willing to trade the price i mean Mm -hmm. We like to say that, you know, investors are the one that, that determine what it trades for and, you know, um, prices move in both directions, right? So, yeah. So I respect the market, German, and my philosophy is that the market is never wrong. Um, so, and, and I don't take that stance because of, because that, that stat is actually not beneficial to me right No, In other words, the stock price is what it is. It fell today, it halted down, right? And I believe that the market is never wrong. But... When the stock price is at three or four dollars, I also believe the same thing that the market is never wrong. <laughs> so if the market thinks that we need to be at four, we'll be at four. If the market thinks that we need to be at three, we'll be at three. And I'm okay with that because I'll get up every single day and I'll do my work. All right. Yeah, because I mean, and, and and we say that as well that the company goes on regardless of the share price. The company issued shares to raise capital to run its business. The price of the shares are up to the investors who own the company and determining what they want to sell it for in a given day. Right. So Right. I see somebody arguing Reeves saying, go ahead and flexing. <laughs> I'm not flexing. I'm just stating the facts. You know, just stating the facts. Elaine is asking what the dividend policy is. Now, he did mention something about dividend in, in the prospectus. When would you consider a dividend, if any, for, for the company? Well, I retain the earnings are growing. Um, I mean, if we have a spectacular year, we'll definitely look at a dividend for early 2023. I'd certainly love to. I'd, I'd certainly love a dividend check. 
that, that would be, that, that would be uh, quite a milestone to be able to pay a dividend. So that's absolutely. That's uh, Natoya is asking, what would be a reason for me to add learn to my portfolio? Great question, Natoya. Natoya, sorry, I heard Natoya. Natoya, seeing the name on the screen. Um, a number of reasons. I mean, obviously, speak to your licensed financial advisor. But number one, definitely, definitely. Number one, I am the youngest CEO on the junior market, which means that I have the vim and vigor. You know, when, when Juliet Willis was talking about her husband. But my point is, um, in another twenty years, I mean, I'm still young. In another twenty years, I'm, I'm fifty-one, and I'll still be running Eddie Focal, and I'll still be learning, right? And learn will still be on the exchange, possibly even graduated to the main market at that point in time. Two, um, we're a growth stock, right? We listed at a dollar, we, you know, we're no 2X what we listed at, right? more than 2X what we listed at, um, or PE continues to, 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 to shrink, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very confident that we'll be able to hit our targets that we would have had in our projections um, in the IPO. Nobody has looked back at that. Uh, I don't hear anybody talking about that um but just look at what is happening around you teachers are migrating the only way we can transform education in jamaica the caribbean latin america africa is through education and agreed think about it how many companies when you talk about edtech in jamaica how many companies come to mind very few yeah. very few so you know investing in edit focal is investing in education and you're getting a positive return so I think it's, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're doing good and making money. So, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay. Uh, so Marva was asking, I think you answered that you can't comment on this already. The large impairment loss on financial assets. Can you expand on those? You already said that you're not able to answer. I just wanted to bring it up because it was in the chat again. Um, all right. Let me see here. Uh, another question from, from Aline, where is the company, uh, I'll use the term spending the most money and how is the company tackling the matter to bring greater value to shareholders? Uh, staff costs and, um, staff costs and, um, uh, staff costs, staff costs. Yeah, man, that's where we're spending the most money. You know, I, I, there was a informal survey that was done that said that Edufocal is one of the highest paying employers in Jamaica. And, you know, and that's such an interesting thing. And I mean, they showed comparisons with us and say, uh, Digicel, uh, Flow and whoever. And, you know, that's also such an interesting thing, Jeremy, because when you're, when you're not an investor and you're the employee, you're happy yeah. that you're getting paid well. But when you're an investor, you'd love for the company that you're. That, that, that was actually at. what we said when we were reviewing the prospectus, because when when you're the one receiving the salary it matters to you to be paid well and we i, I personally think that person should pay it well if they're and we don't and we, and we actually don't have to pay this well because we're paying above market rate um you know so but we, we we've made that decision and there are certain things to be honest with you there are certain decisions that we've made you know going back to this conversation um german about employee happiness i value my employees i value my staff members that you know it's a tough time. It's a tough time for a lot of people, right? When you're looking at what where inflation is, um, you know, that's that's how hard my decisions are. Do I do I increase salaries by five percent or ten percent? But then you have to factor in, you know, will that equate to growth in productivity of twenty percent, right? Do we do it this quarter or next quarter? You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's not easy when you have to factor in all these things. I, I and I have had to make a lot of tough calls, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I definitely to me, if, if if you're getting value from from the employees through growth and productivity at the company, then it's worth it. Um, Romario is asking, when is the rights issue? Whenever the Lord wills it. <laughs> All right. Um, I think this is Natalia again says congrats are in order in terms of the partnership with the library. Um, 20 years ago in my high school days, the library was barely utilized, much less so now. How impactful and beneficial would, would this partnership be? I said you forget that it's the library. It's it's just going to be a beautiful space for you to learn in. 
but an adult or a child. So I know you have, I know people have a sentiment towards the library, whether negative or positive, but we now have heavy influence over hundreds of locations for people to learn in across the island. It doesn't get, and I mean, the library sees more than a million people each year. That's a fact, right? And it's costing us nothing. Ultimately, really, it's not costing us anything to, to do this partnership. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, the usage of the library because we're not depending on people who are there. We're, we're bringing people there and we can bring people there. We will bring people there. I mean, a, a space to go to learn is definitely valuable. I, I'll give a simple example. One of the hardest things for us as Learn, Grow, Invest is to find a place to meet for our community members to meet each month and learn. So, I mean, more spaces. And, I, I, and I'm sure libraries know top of mind. Yeah. You know, even this conversation is bringing the library back to the attention. Of yeah, because yeah, it, it wasn't something that I would have thought about, actually. So that's right. definitely a good thing there. Yeah, man. Uh, Matic is asking, if you could do it over, what would you subtract or add to the journey? Nothing. Um, I am who I am because of, of all of my experiences. Um, I continue to be optimistic about the future of Jamaica, and that's not just me saying that. I genuinely am a patriotic Jamaican. I, if you look at my Twitter bio, it says very proud Jamaican. I'm not a occasionally proud Jamaican. I'm, and I'm not a Jamaican who's proud because of a specific party in power. I'm proud whether the PNP is in power, the JLP is in power. I'm proud through good times and bad times. Um, so yeah, I would change nothing. And um, I'm just extremely happy about the journey. And I, you know, I would not choose anywhere else on earth to, to, to go through this, this, this process. My dream, Jamaica allowed my dreams to come through. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, interestingly enough, my wife and I went through the same journey a few years back. It was stay here or migrate to Canada. We decided to stay and we, we, we definitely don't regret it as well. But at the same time, we are de definitely interested in traveling, but we are ones who believe that success can be found here in Jamaica. So oh, I mean, absolutely. Well, I found success and you found some, uh, found success, Jeremy. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. definitely. All, right. All right. So Purpose Finder Club is, you know, um, saying she's proud of the growth for, for Edifocal and saying EdTech is the future. And um, I believe that Thank is... Thank you, Purpose Finder Club. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I'll ask you, I think we went through everything here. Um, there. I wanted to spend a little bit more time on the financials, kind of go through those, but sure. we thought it more relevant for the for the community to ask these questions because you're in our group, so we can you know bounce some questions to you from time to time. But I'll ask you, since we're pretty much about to wrap up, is there anything that you want to share with us? Anything that you are so compelled to share with us um, in terms of anything that you believe may be relevant to or understanding of the company there are a few things definitely that we would say that even in, in some of the conversations we've seen i think the understanding of edifocal is probably limited in general mm -hmm. um, so i mean a lot of the things you've shared there today, we're working on that by the way yeah a, a lot of the things you've shared will, will definitely help us uh one of the things we lament me personally is the abundance of information that we have about companies right because um the more we know, the better investment decisions we can make. And sometimes it's not that we don't necessarily like a company, but we don't have enough information to maybe make a complete decision. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you know, it, it's it's balancing that based on what we do know. And so, I mean, I think the more information that we have, and that's why we have forums like this. So I'm happy that you're able to give us, you know, a lot of context that we were missing about the things that you shared. Is there anything that you are able to share with us that will help us again deepen our, our understanding of Edifoco? So I would say this. One of the things you have to consider in making an investment decision is, a, is the longevity of a company. Edifoco has been around for over a decade. And for many of those years, we struggled as a private company operating in a country with a debt to GDP ratio at the time of 140, right? When you, if, if you look at back, if you look back at the year Germany that we launched 2012, it was a horrible time for Jamaica, yeah. right? It was a right around the time we we're looking at the debt exchange and so on and so forth. 
you know, they were thinking about closing the, the junior market. It was a bad time. People don't remember. Despite all of those things, we have managed to grow the company year over year. And not only are we growing it from a top line perspective, but we've also been able to grow it from a bottom line perspective. The question you must ask yourself is, despite all of those hardships, Edifocal had growth. Now that Edifocal is a listed company backed by an amazing set of investment bankers in the form of Mayberry, we're a publicly traded company. We have access to financing faster and cheaper. The question you must ask yourself is, will Edifocal, one, be around in 10 or 20 years, and two, do you think that the stock price will still be $2 in 20 years? Can things be any worse, right? <laughs> Certainly not, is my opinion. So I I don't I don't want to wait long to see a, a 10 bagger <laughs> in the form of an Eddie Focal share rise. Um but the next time I come on your program, Jermaine, I want to be talking about Eddie Focal at ten dollars. Um and I I you know I, so I don't want to be back on your program until we, we hit. <laughs> I'm, I'm not necessarily sure I'm okay with that. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I understand. Well, it depends. It depends on how fast things can happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Right? So, all right. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you, Gordon. I, I think that, um, again, you've, you've definitely given us um, an understanding. I'll hold you to you um, at least sounding like you're going to be making the effort to give us some more details in terms of oh, absolutely average revenue per user, breakdown of revenues, you know, some of the things we, talk, we talked about. Because those things, again, they help us understand the company. So even personally, when we do reviews, the more information we have, then the more color we can share in terms of the, the perspective on the company. I see two final questions here, so I'll probably just, you know, drop them in real quick. Kamoy is asking, can we expect any partnerships between Edifocal and BCIC? We already have a partnership with BCIC. Yeah, right, right. But, but yeah, we definitely will be collaborating on B, um, with BCIC on a number of other partnerships in the future. I mean, without a doubt, I can definitely answer that. Peter Levy, I mean, is such an amazing person. And we've been working with BCIC for years and we'll continue to strengthen and, and, and grow our relationship with BCIC. So right. for sure. Natalia is is hinting at PBS and Edifocal partnership. I don't know how you who knows feel about that. And Michael is asking, what are your competitive advantages given the the competitors in the ed tech industry like one on one and I create? Um, we have a lot of linkages. Um, and 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 me. <laughs> No, but link seriously though. Um, it, it, so networks are big for me. I love networks. You know, I would say to you, look at the companies that Mayberry owns. Um, you, in fact, go just go look, take a look at NJE, see the companies that Mayberry owns, um, and that can give you an idea of the potential scope of our, our partnerships and what can happen in the near future. Linkages. Remember that word. Very important. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. And, and I've definitely heard you say that before as well. I think that's maybe a part of your reason for, well, a part of the benefits of working with a company like Mayberry. So, yeah. Um, is Last question I see here is Eddie Focal approaching the board of iCreate for a hostile takeover. No, no of course not. Yeah. All right. Those are all of our questions. Nobody can say that I didn't share every single question that was asked. I don't want to to, to be seem like I'm, I'm cherry picking those questions. All right, Gordon, thank you so much. Definitely a lot of value from you in in this discussion. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll continue the conversation in Telegram group, of course, if you haven't joined us there yet. The link is in the description of this video. We do wish you all the success in, in terms of, you know, the company, uh, your family. Uh, you know, we've known each other for a while, as I said, so we are we're definitely you know, wishing you all the best. I uh, look forward to Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, definitely. And you're you're welcome anytime. So if, if there's an announcement and there's something that you'd like to share with us, <laughs> you know, you can just message me and say, you know. Yeah, man. Who knows? We might, have, we might have big announcements soon. Yep. Come Very soon. Who Come knows? Tonight. All right. All right. All right, cool. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, everybody. For, thank you for, for joining us.
Right. Take care, Gordon. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you found value in that discussion. Please take a moment to like the video. It's It's been... We need to just improve our likes in general, right? So asking you to take a moment to like the video. You've been here. You've been enjoying this content. Like the video. It really, really helps us. All right, so we have to run. We're actually going live on IG in 14 minutes. So be sure to join us over there. We're going to be speaking about managing your credit card, how to, the best ways to use it. So we're going to go live just for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're doing weekly IG lives now on Tuesdays. So join us over there on IG and please do register for our upcoming investment class on September 3rd. It's stocks for beginners, but we're actually thinking of adding some more content to the basic outline. So stay tuned for that. The link is already available in our link tree. So again, if you check the description of this video, you'll see our link tree. Just click on that. The link to register for our class is right there. Thank you so much for being here. I really do, you, really do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest.